Welcome to All About TRH, aka All About the Truth. Today we recap the latest from the Real Houses of Beverly Hills episode and update you on what's really going on with Larsa Pippen and Marcus Jordan, plus talks in Miami. Hi, Chantel. Hey, Roxanne. Does my mic sound okay? Yeah. Okay, good, because someone said that it didn't last time, and I just want to make sure it sounds good. Um, uh, We are covering Beverly Hills. We're going to talk some Miami, but before we get into that, Chantel, we did a whole podcast covering Larsa Pippen (laughs) and Marcus Jordan's, like, relationship and what happened, and they're back together. Yeah, that's embarrassing. What I can tell you about Larsa is that she has a contact at TMZ. I feel like anytime something breaking happened with the Kardashians, where the Kardashians were genuinely shocked that TMZ found out about it, it was because of Larsa. Or it's because they, like, advised Larsa to do it. So on Valentine's Day, we see a photo of Marcus and Larsa getting flowers at the flower shop. I just, like, knew it. We Like, I feel like we – I'm – I can see them getting back together, breaking up, getting back together, breaking up, and getting back together again. And that's yeah. why, my friends, you don't unfollow anybody. Exactly. We did a whole thing where we we're like, should you unfollow the ex? No, you shouldn't, because look what happened. I think it's a publicity stunt, to be honest. Uh, for, like, what reason, though, you think? I just think that Larsa likes attention, you mm. know? And uh, I don't – the whole – her she alerted tmz that she was going to be at that floor that's how it works like you tip them off you let them know you're going to be at a floral shop on valentine's day and tmz she has this big connect with tmz so that's how that happens you know they're not like out here looking for larsa pippen and marcus jordan the next day at a flower shop you know so um yeah and then chanel i don't know if you saw but she and Marcus were spotted also with her wearing a huge diamond ring in a white dress on Valentine's n- night. So, like, last night. Okay, and then, that's of course, so photographers got it. Yeah. And she put on her wedding, you know, where you'd get engaged, that finger. Oh, my gosh. Right. So, that's why, to me, it's like this is all for attention. Yeah. No, definitely. I can see that. Or, you know, maybe he's feels bad about something he did and he's like all right i'm buying you a ring because you know i did something really effed up like the ring after the um the cheating like they said in beverly hills yeah exactly so you just never know i I need some jewelry i know i hate to bring this up but like when kobe bryant oh my gosh rest I, i still can't believe he passed but he did that with his um wife vanessa when he cheated it's it's like it's a real thing oh yeah you don't seem like you want to talk about this much. Yeah, well, I get sad about that, um, Kobe, because, like, I just think he's oh. such a good guy. No, like, I didn't want like, I just think he's such a good guy, you know, and, like, he did his wrongdoings, and I think he made up for it, I'm sure, but it's yeah, not from jewelry, you know? Yeah, no, I'm just talking about the situation. It's crazy that, um, it, that that's Dang. what it could look like. It could look like either publicity stunt wanted attention thriving for you know just thirsty for some attention or he really did do something but she's so attached to him i mean their separation anxiety they have separate, <laughs> their podcast is called they have do they even do that like i don't do they even have episodes i should look but i mean that's all she just kept saying to him like even when she's on this trip in miami in the episode like i have separation anxiety i know yeah because their podcast is literally called that so like how would that work after they break up yeah, that's why you just don't get into business with someone that you've been dating for less than a year. I know. People. Literally. Literally. Um, all right. So let's get into Beverly Hills. Did you think it was a good episode? Absolutely not. Oh, wow. But I think before we get into Beverly Hills, you know, we haven't really talked on um, the last three episodes. Like, you and I haven't really talked about um, about Beverly Hills. Yeah. So I feel like, what did you feel overall about the um, Spain trip? <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know, though, like, because they're killing it. They're killing it with ratings. So it doesn't matter if I say yawn because other people are saying otherwise. And and they're really enjoying it. And they actually like, like, Sutton's personality and all that stuff. So I'm in the minority here. Um, well, I'm in the minority then, too, because, like, oh, my gosh, you guys. Like, I was on a plane watching. And I was like, when is it, you know, like, and anything on the plane, it should be interesting, okay? And I was like, get right. me off, like, get me to the next episode. 
Right. So true. Yeah. It's not to me. The season isn't good. Obviously, of course, like I'm the worst, like the parts that I like are the Kyle and Mauricio part, but that's it. (laughs) Well, um, another, another major thing that I think we can discuss a little bit about is like, how do you feel about like what one thing that has kind of been interesting to me is like the way Sutton is bringing up her ex-husband all of a sudden and explaining that a little bit. Oh, I I wrote something about that episode. Yeah. Yeah, When her and Kyle spoke, I wrote something about because she t- she did it a lot she talked a lot about it um in her spain episodes you know because she feels like she was just now getting over the breakup and or the divorce. All right, Sutton. yeah <laughs> but no i can see that i really think it could take literally 10 years you guys i'm not saying that it can't but i also i also think that it's kind of convenient that she's like talking you know when you talk about things hoping someone else will open up up about their shit mm. I talk about it a little bit later when she has that conversation with Kyle. Okay. Yeah. So go ahead. Start us off. Like, oh yeah. Okay. You guys, so I'm recapping Beverly Hills, the boring episode. And I'm so, I mean, I wrote so many notes, so I'll probably uh, say stuff. Yeah, for sure. I mean, in the beginning, like, you know, they do little flashbacks. We see, did you see Dorit's, um, playing in the park with her, you know, kids and she had this like full on picnic set up for them. Like, I'm like, you're so extra Dorit. That is doing the most, but I love people who do the most. So it's fine. Yeah, but we really start off the episode with Erica. She's talking to her therapist about how far she's come, and her therapist points it out to her as well. But Erica and is like having the conversation with her therapist about how she still feels that she has these unresolved, you know, feelings with the ladies about like coming after her. So, what do you feel about this? I think Erica does. She doesn't like any of these women. If she wasn't on the show, she would not talk to anyone, not a single one of them. She feels judgment. And no support. And she's tolerating all these ladies just for the show, for the money, to be quite honest. To, and to me, I'm just like, okay, Erica, at this point, like, just have the conversation. I mean, obviously, we see at the end. So, like, it was bothering me. I'm like, just have these conversations with people. Like, literally tell them what you feel. Get your closure and just get over it at this point. Because, like, they don't really owe you that much either. Just because you became, like, to me, it's because, like, you won a court case doesn't mean that you should be owed these full apologies. Like you should have gotten, you should have known that these are not your friends then from the beginning. If you didn't feel the support from them, that's how I feel about it. Yeah, for sure. I I also like see her side, but it's, and I guess we'll talk about it because when she does confront them, I agree with what the ladies are saying. Yeah. Because that's how I would be about it. Addie. Ladies, did you know that one of the most common complaints from women about their sexual health is a frustrating low libido? Our sex drive can decline, but it's also treatable. Addy or Flibanserin is FDA approved and has been clinically proven to increase sexual desire in certain premenopausal women who are bothered by a low libido. So if you feel like you've lost your desire and want to get it back, stop falling for the snake oils and ask your doctor about Addy today or go to Addy.com. That's A-D-D-Y-I dot com. Addy is for premenopausal women with acquired generalized hypoactive sexual desire disorder, HSDD, who have not had problems with low sexual desire in the past, who have low sexual desire no matter the type of sexual activity, the situation, or the sexual partner. The low sexual desire is troubling to them and is not due to a medical or mental health problem, problems in the relationship, or medicine or other drug use. Addy is not for use in men or to enhance sexual performance. Your risk of severe low blood pressure and fainting is increased if you drink one to two standard alcoholic drinks close in time to your Addy dose. Wait at least two hours after drinking before taking Addy at bedtime. Your risk of severe low blood pressure and fainting is also increased if you take certain prescriptions, over-the-counter or herbal medications or have liver problems. Low blood pressure and fainting can happen when you take Addy even if you don't drink alcohol or take other medicines. Do not take if you are allergic to any of the ingredients in Addy. Allergic reactions may include hives, itching or trouble breathing. Sleepiness, sometimes serious, can occur. Common side effects include dizziness, nausea, tiredness, difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep, and dry mouth. See full PI and medication guide, including box warning at addy.com forward slash PI or call 844-PINK-PILL. Ask your doctor about Addy today or go to addy.com. That's A-D-D-Y-I dot com. Thrive Market is my go-to for all my grocery and household essentials, and the convenience of getting everything online then quickly shipped to my doorstep is a huge time saver. Also, Thrive Market really helps with my goals of not snacking with all the nasty stuff because I pick all the healthy snacks, I can literally sort what I'm looking for if it's keto, low sugar, and I do not have to pass the bad ones and feel tempted while grocery shopping. And as a Thrive Market member, I save money on every single grocery order. On average, I save over 30% each time. They even have deals page that changes daily and always has some for the favorite brands. I am obsessed with the sour crayon and Thrive Market's bone broth. You guys, the sour crayon literally tastes like the peach 
um, was Sour Patches. Unreal. I saved $20.65 on my last order. Hey, I say that's a win. Join in on the savings with Thrive Market today and get 30% off your first order, plus a free $60 gift. Go to thrivemarket.com slash TRH for 30% off your first order, plus a free $60 gift. That's T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash T-R-H. Thrivemarket.com slash T-R-H. We get to Sutton and her horses, and she confuses her own horse. So that was weird, but I just get so bored watching her, um, even on the horse, but we, we get to the good part. So Kyle gets to the ranch and her and her and son are talking about their trip um, up in Spain and how it was and how everyone it got emotional. But we get to the good part where Kyle asks son if she's ever has went to therapy with her, um, with her ex-husband and she says no. And Kyle reveals to us that her and Maurice were in therapy. Well, but Chantal, you're missing a very important part. Kyle didn't just randomly ask that. It's because that's when Sutton started opening up about how the trip was so hard for her because of she realized she has to let go of like her ex-husband officially. And so then she had asked her, so did you guys ever go to therapy? It wasn't like she just yeah. asked it. It's because yeah, yeah, she brought yeah. it up. Yeah, definitely. So what did you, what did you so you felt that like Sutton literally did that because um she she knows that something's going on with her and Mauricio? Well, because Kyle asked. She literally was like, how long have you guys, like, I feel like Kyle's like us low-key where she knows that she would be like, well, I, you keep bringing up this suddenly out of nowhere. I mean, this is like three seasons in and you're having this like randomly hard time. And I'm not saying she's not having a hard time. Don't come at me, guys. I'm not saying she's not having a hard time. But also, I just feel like it's like convenient because if someone, if I was having a hard time and someone's telling me about their marital woes or whatever, I would end up opening up. So she, so Kyle asked her like, how, have, how long have you been divorced? And then she was like seven years and you can just tell Kyle's like, oh, okay. Um, and, uh, you know, but it's, it's different cause he is making a big move in a different country, but I don't know. It just feels off to talk about letting it go many years later. So I just think that she's doing that to get Kyle to talk. That's my opinion. Mm. Yeah. I can, I can see that. I can see, I can see a little bit of both right there for sure. Yeah. Cause like, and then she keeps especially talking about it with Kyle. Like she keeps saying specifically with Kyle about the marriage stuff. Like she's like, you know, it's just the marriage. Like you hear her more talking about it with Kyle. Yeah. And I, but like, you know, um, watching the Spain, the Spain episodes, like her yeah. and Kyle really are very close and like they got even probably closer. Like every moment that Sutton was having, Kyle was there for her. Like sometimes yeah. Kyle's just really such a great friend. I feel, I feel like. And, yeah. And and I don't feel like the ladies can be that much of a great friend to her because she doesn't really open up to them. I don't think she trusts them as much, you know, as they trust her. Oh, absolutely not. Side note, just seeing the distance between Tori, Dury and Kyle, like there really is no friendship there. There's no friendship. Like I don't uh -uh. even, yeah, it's so crazy. She, I, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, you. No, it's okay. Go. You, no, I insist you. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, no, I was going to say the one thing I do want to talk about is Kyle's frustration with Mo. Because I don't know, I don't know if you felt this watching it, but I get her frustration with Mo. Because at the end of the day, and I know this kind of sounds shitty to say, but Loki Kyle made Mo. And I know, again, it's a terrible way to think, but he came into this marriage with nothing. And maybe I'm using poor choice of words. Maybe you can correct me, but I feel like there's resentment. She connected him with one of the most successful businessmen, which is Rick Hilton. He made connections, you know, that Rick Hilton gave him. And Kyle was probably raising her kids alone. Like a lot of moms do while the husbands work. And to me, that's a harder job than working itself. So I can't imagine Chantel doing pickups and drop-offs or that my husband doesn't attend field trips or school functions, meetings at school with me. And she was taking kids, to all the activities. I mean, my husband takes the kids to gymnastics while I watch Jack at home. So we both do things together. And when Kyle's talking to Mauricio, I'm like, I get why she's feeling like this. Cause I feel like I would get resentment if I supported my husband all these years. And then he's bigger than ever and he still can't shut it off and prioritize me. Yeah. Like when, if we're going to jump to that scene there, I, it's actually funny. Cause this was the one scene that I actually was like, wait, I kind of get yeah. why Kyle is over him. And it's more because to me, right. it, it, it felt, it, it felt like Mo just doesn't understand. He doesn't get it. Like he doesn't yeah. get why she's annoyed. Like he was like smiling and be like, yeah, we're so busy. It's like, okay, no, like this is, 
it's not just like you're busy and I'm busy. It's like this is a problem that we're both busy like this and right. you're not prioritizing me. Like he just wasn't understanding it. And like she you could just tell she's literally in her heart is like dying, like wanting to like say to him, like, this is not working and it's not it's not, this is not helping, you know. Even it's so she's funny. Dying, I wrote but, that though too, that Mauricio just doesn't get it. Yeah, like it's this was the first scene that I was like, dude, he does not get it. Like the way he was smiling. Yeah. And she's like, no, that's not it's not fun. Like, you know, he just I don't know. It's like he's thinking like he's doing these things for her, like to help the relationship, but then like really what she just needs is you to be there and like you to like put her first. Like that's yeah. all she wants is you to put her first and you're you're not. And this is the time in their lives where the kids are growing up. Life is short. They need to be together. And, you know, he's booming and loving it. And that's his focus. He now, Chantal, I know you watch his, right? You watch a show on Netflix. I feel like you do. I only watched yeah. the first, um, the first season. Oh, so there's a second season already? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, he's like loving this attention. And I don't know when they were just talking about the sessions, it was uncomfortable to me because Kyle's checked out. Even when Mauricio ate something, she gets annoyed because she's like, just focus on this conversation. Like you're eating, you're not taking this seriously. She's like, yeah, crumbs there. Uh, and he looks like he, he was really aging, by the way. I know anything. Yeah, hundred percent. Anything, anything except his teeth, though, which is like really throws me off with him. But Chantel, those are veneers. Yeah, I know. I was gonna that's say, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> that's, that's why. Me off. It's like yeah, too I much. Know. But yeah, any, any, literally anything that um he does annoys her. It's because she just is like wants Checked to strangle out. him. Yeah, she wants to strangle him. It's like too much. But the he, one thing he doesn't she get it. Yeah, the one thing she does say, which is a big statement, is she says, things I wouldn't want my daughters to accept, I don't want to accept for myself. And that's like, whoa, like, what are you really feeling that you don't, that you'd be sad that your daughters are accepting what you're accepting? You know, it's like, she probably feels so alone. I think that's what it is. Yeah, I think for her, that her like, usually when you first get married and, like, you have little kids, I feel like that's the most challenging time with your husband and with her it's the complete opposite which is so interesting and it's because like she's and she says this later on where she's finding this independence and she's loving it so she, because sometimes people find it earlier in life or they don't find it at all and she's finding it now she's like i'm not going to accept it but it's like crazy because it's been 27 years of marriage so wild so like would you wouldn't you do you, don't you feel like after 27 years I would accept it. Like, I feel like if I had issues in my marriage, I'm going to want to run now because this is like my youth, my young time. Like, let me, I guess, like enjoy it or whatever, or be happy. But she's like 27 years later, but she's feeling the best that she's ever felt, I guess. Yeah. And like maybe the, the issues that she, there was, there was when they were younger didn't matter as much and she can get through it at the time. And like, again, they were raising kids. So, well, and she, well, she was, yeah, she was raising kids. So she wasn't independent. It's all she knew. It's all she was doing. So she was tolerating a lot more. Exactly. Uh, we I do love. Oh, go ahead. Oh, you missed. You missed. We missed like the Garcelle and her kids. Well, the, so yeah, I was gonna say I love what Garcelle was doing with the bullying. Yeah, it was so cute. So she partnered with um a thing called Cyber Smile, and I was just dying how the kids like the one of the twins were kept messing up and it was making it harder for them to read. So it was just funny. But it's those, kind those of crazy. Were, those, they remind me of Sloan. They were. I, they, oh my god, because it's kind of crazy that like she's sitting her son down and saying like you can use Uber, and he's so excited. You're 15 years old. Are you joking? Like I was scared to get an Uber at my like in the tw in my 20s like why is this something that you want to do regardless right i mean Your friends i just should be feel like that age is annoying i know but like it's like if you don't have friends that are older then you you need to be sitting your ass at home or garcelle needs to just drop them exactly i mean in high school like if i wanted to go places it was either my mom would drop me there's a reason that you can't drive until you're 16. It's like, that's the age where like, you're still an adolescent. Like you shouldn't be going anywhere anyways without your parents knowing. And like, you're, I'll, I'll take you. You don't need to be getting an Uber by yourself. Yeah. That just reminds me of our little cousin, Izzy. And she's, she's 16. And I can't even imagine her getting in, in, in an Uber at 16. I'd be like, you're not going. Exactly. Her mom would never allow that. And and I don't, not that I'm judging herself. Cause like, you know, I'm sure everything's different in LA and Beverly Hills. And there's all these other things. And yeah, you can track your kids, but it's just like, I would have been like, um, no, I'm sorry. Get, cry if you think I'm being, you know, strict. The problem is in that, in the whole Garcelle thing, it sounds like the dad, they respect the dad more and it's like Garcelle's trying so hard and I feel like, you know, they're probably going to be the type that until they're older and they have their own kids, they're going to understand what Garcelle was doing. Yeah, 100%. You know, and their dad's just like probably a yes man. Well, 100%. 
I, I definitely forwarded the Sutton dating scene. I, can Do people tell watch. me if they're actually watching this? No, I need to know. Watch. Because, you know, like, I just saw them throwing darts. I'm like, yeah, this is nice, I guess. But, like, I would never want to sit there and, like, how did this guy even, like, agree to, like, get filmed? Because, I know. you know. I know. I wonder, though, because I know there are people who are starting over in their life at, you know, the same age as Sutton. So that might be interesting. But oh, it's yeah, just that's Sutton's, true. but it's just Sutton who's not, like, I can't watch her. It's so cringe to me. Yeah, because she's not a good dater. Like, if it was, like, if we see anyone else, I probably would be interested. You're right. But, like, it's, like, with hers, like, I just can't. But it's not even entertaining either, you know? I don't know. Even, because, like, you know how sometimes, like, shit dates are entertaining? Yeah, Which I, I know, don't even know like, if it was a shit date, but... No, they were, she had a good time. Oh, okay, well. They good. were, like, well, having a good time doing Well, that's good. Cards. Hopefully they're still <laughs> together. Um, Yeah. What do you think of them? To- we get oh, to Anne Marie's Mother's Day brunch, um, and she did an amazing job, like what we saw. Like, did you see her spread? Yeah, I would love that. Yeah. I, I want to, like, I feel like that would be that would be my type of Mother's Day. Like, I want a Mother's Day brunch with my girlfriends where we're drinking mimosas. Maybe I'll coordinate it this year. Yeah, and then I don't have friends though, but so we'll see. <laughs> you know what was funny that um, so PK or PK and Drew we are on the phone, and like this is the one thing that I hear we hear. I feel like I hear all the time is that the the men will say this excuse saying like you're not my mother, so like I don't have to do X, Y, and Z. Like I don't have to be there for you, or I don't have to do all these things. And it's like such a funny excuse for them to do to say because it's like okay, if you're gonna give me that energy, then I'll give you the exact same energy back on Father's Day, you know. But it just don't you hear that a lot that people say okay you're not my mom i don't need to do things for you no i don't really i hear that all the time i really i don't i don't feel like i feel like people know if you have kids like you you have to spoil both but you also have to respect your own mom yeah of course but then like when they say that like i don't need to i don't need to like do this like really nice thing for you because you're not my mom like i'm gonna go do that for my mom like that's what a lot of guys end up saying ew gag yeah I mean, I get, like, I know my husband on Mother's Day, he always wants to, like, maybe see his mom or something, but we always will do things, whatever, you know. He'll pick me first, I feel like, so. But still respect his mom. No, of course. I think you should respect your mom, but it just, the way, it it was PK not respecting Dorit as a mother. No, I know. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, PK, there's a lot of red flags, that one. (laughs) Literally. And he blames on UK, like, UK, we don't celebrate it here. <laughs> but I really do love UK people. Just watching Love Island, I just feel like oh, they're the best type of people. Yeah, I feel like, but they sometimes, sorry guys, there's like no depth to them. Like, all they really do care about is like partying and having fun. It's so funny. I just think they don't take life seriously. Yeah, and They don't exactly. take people seriously. They don't, they're not offended easily. And I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So you shout out to our UK ladies, ladies of London then. Yeah, I know I do. On my on my list. Okay. But yeah, nothing to be honest, like nothing happening at Marine's um Anne Marie's Mother's Day brunch until we get to the very end. Okay. We well, I was to the- gonna I was actually I was gonna say something about Sutton walking into the brunch with her own liquor. A little like cringe. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. The vodka. Yeah. She literally walked in there with her own liquor. It's like you're yeah. going to a brunch that's going to have liquor. You don't need to pregame. You're literally going to a brunch that has a bunch of liquor. She's going through something. That's all I got to tell you. I know. Like, or leave the liquor in the car, you know, don't, don't do all that. Like maybe do that. Cause sometimes like we go to places we'll pregame before, but we would never pregame during the day if we're already going somewhere to drink. Yeah. And then the way that she, it was funny though, the way that, the way that she was walking up the steps, she's like, where's the railings? And it really is so true. Like though, those are like steep steps for her, like for Anne Marina to have like these railings to help people. <laughs> she's so extra though. Oh, um, Sutton. Yes, I can. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's wrong? I was so team Sutton last season and the season before. So I just don't understand. It's crazy how I'm so turned off. Again, maybe it's because when we met her, Chantel. Yeah, but wasn't she? I'm trying to remember. I don't know. I didn't care for her. Oh, her okay. or Crystal. Oh, oh, yeah. Crystal was so boring. Yeah. But yeah, to me, then nothing really happened until we get to the end where, you know, Erica sits down, is sitting down with all the ladies and she kind of does finally mention that she felt that she wanted, you know, an apology or she wanted things from the ladies. And they kind of go like one by one and say their piece. And um, Garcelle's was like, well, she was like, I stand by what I said. I, I said. But who did you think that you were surprised by the most? 
I wasn't surprised by anyone. I first off, Sutton was drunk as hell, so she was like, "Oh my god, I'm, I'm so sorry. sorry." You know, when you're yeah. you're super like extra because you're drunk, like that's how she was acting, and she wasn't gonna fight it because she was drunk and whatever. But I do agree with Dorit, and I do agree with Kyle. It was just difficult for them to support her because how she was reacting to things. Because that was my whole thing. I it was very hard. Like I, like when I think about Erica, and you know, a lot of the times you, we're. If for example, Kyle Richards, I don't know if we touch on this, but she talked about how she'll sign documents for Mauricio her entire marriage. Like Kyle's like very educated. She's smart, but she trusted her husband. She trusts her husband. So she'll sign documents. And I feel like Erica did sign things, but she really didn't know what her husband was up to. He clearly was an asshole too. He didn't seem like he told her much. So, um, I feel like if Erica re responded differently and didn't act like she didn't give a shit about the victims, a lot of people would feel bad for her, you know, but she didn't act like that at all. That was the problem. It's how she handled it. And that's what Kyle and Dorit were saying. Yeah. She, she acted like she was the victim, which like there was like other victims that, that got way worse than you did. So like, that's yeah. I yeah. Think. Oh yeah. She did that too. I still till this day believe Lisa Rinna enabled Erica to act that way. Cause Erica, like, w you know, when Lisa would, or Erica would act that way, Lisa would be like, yeah, that's fine. F it, you know, whatever. So mm -hmm. I felt like Erica was getting bad advice, even though Erica's her own person. So I also I, just like, think that I know we, we, we like, we, especially you, you went hard on Lisa Renna last season, but like, I swear we need her in this, in this season. Yeah, I kind of do miss Cause I just didn't like that. She was coming for Kathy Hilton and she was like stepping in yeah. a family's feud. I hate yeah, that. I hate, hate other, like, just like when like Caroline and Jacqueline stepped in Teresa Melissa's, I hate that. Like step back, do not get involved, you know? Exactly. So that's why I did not like Lisa Renna. But did we talk about the Kyle Richards signing document thing? No, what we when did she come out saying this? She said that in one um in the episode they were on the not this one the last one they were on the bus to Spain and she was just oh. talking about Mauricio and she was like you know I always sign papers and then Erica's like girl like you should not be doing that and Kyle's like you know if my husband gives me something I sign it and I kind of was like I'm glad she said it because we all know that Joe Judice when it came to Joe Judice and Teresa Teresa didn't know what the f was going on okay it's clear as day you know she wasn't questioning stuff like she just trusted her husband so like you have someone like kyle who's like you know from la who's that you know she whatever i mean she teresa's educated too but you know like look how kyle i mean again if my husband gives me a paper i'm signing it so i think it's i, I think it's very common it's very for common, people to say that yeah, I think it's very common for people to say that, for people to do, but I think that all of these things are learning. Like, yeah, like teach yeah, you, like, don't do it. Exactly. Like, you know, let's take something away from reality shows. Okay, guys? <laughs> I know. I know. My husband's here. I'm never signing anything he gives me again. Yep. You He's wish. not even like, paying you're attention. lazy to even read it. Well, that's a problem. I'm just like, okay, cool. Like, you know, like this is my husband. What, what, why would he ever do anything and then my name be in there and it be the wrong thing? But like a lot of people don't think they're going to get caught or they're just. Yeah, people are greedy. People are whatever. Yeah. People make mistakes. Sometimes, sometimes like you should just know what you're, what, what's even on the paper, you know? Right. Exactly. So I don't know. I, I did. I thought it was relatable. Like when Kyle said it, it's like, yeah, exactly. A lot of women who even are against like what happened with Teresa are, I guarantee if they're in that situation, they probably signed a million documents from their husband. Oh, for sure. But their husband just weren't, wasn't doing anything stupid. Yes. But yeah, uh, Beverly Hills uh, next week is a season finale and I'm kind of happy about it. So happy. Um, I'm excited for the reunion though, because like I'm sure the reunion is of gonna course. be good because like and I think Kyle said it like Kyle said said that it was like brutal for her. But I yeah, think we're gonna they see, all say that though. I know. But I think we're gonna see like, you know, again, her and Jury not really on good terms. She's gonna get like there's gonna be a lot of questions about her and Mo and like that's stuff that's interesting to me. Yeah, I think it's gonna I'm I don't care and even if it's a shitty season, I'll always watch like the reunion and be invested. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we've missed a couple of episodes about Miami, but you guys have asked us about our thoughts on the whole Lisa Kiki drama that happened last week. And, uh, uh, what do you think? I mean, Lisa came to the trip, the Mexico city stuff, and she's still going through so much with Lenny. And, uh, I feel like I mean, sometimes for, uh, uh, like, I'll say this, like, yeah, can Lisa be, um, selfish okay like they all know this they all say she's a little bit more self-centered it's been a very hard like couple years for her but for kiki like kiki 
went in hard you guys to me like when i was watching it, i was like damn she's going in hard she's like literally saying karma this is what you get like it was a lot of things that you should not say to a friend um that's how i felt about it i get both sides though i do feel yeah. like you know there's only like it sucks because lisa's going through this now and lisa is the type who needs to talk about it and repeat it because she's going through it now she never thought this would happen dude so you know it's hard for her and i completely understand but i also understand the other side where it's like that's all we ever talk about but of course but lisa's probably like but it's what i'm currently going through so yeah that's all we talk about you know yeah so i i get where kiki's frustration was coming and then i get why lisa is where she's at you know yeah for sure i did have uh, i did have you guys ask us some questions um, so um, I'll read a few questions. It was so cute. We asked, um, one of our listeners asked a question and we put like her username on here and she got so excited. I thought that was the cutest thing ever. Aww. I know. So, um, yeah, I did want to read some of the questions that they asked about Beverly Hills in Miami on what they want us to answer. And it says, um, does Lisa care too much? About so Jay Shka, I don't know, you know me, I'm probably saying this wrong. Does Lisa care too much about losing her lifestyle? Uh, yeah, I think to me, Lisa is scared. She didn't think that it would ever happen. And I do think it's more about the life she had than her actually liking Lenny. Oh, for sure. I mean, you get comfortable. Like it's all, it's all the ladies. It's, it's everyone in life. Like you get, even us now, like think about what you're making. Like if, if you even lost like 20,000 of that, like, are you going to, are you going to like, not like your, your lifestyle? Like if you couldn't go to the gym you wanted to go to, or you couldn't get the coffee you wanted to get, like, it's uncomfortable to not be used to getting what you, you, you could get with the yeah. money Lenny was providing. She also asked if Lisa's still in love with Lenny. And I don't think she is. No, no. I don't think she even was. I think she just loved her situation and she does have two small kids. So she wants to have her kids see like a mom and dad at home and, you know, she had it all. So it's like, of course, I think that she, up is like, Ugh. yeah, I think she obviously she has some love for him, but I think she loved her life and she loved what it looked like to other people. I think that's what she loved a lot. Right. So Larsa Pippen says that she spent 800000 on her new tequila brand. So March 24, 1999 said, did Larsa really spend eight hundred k on the tequila brand or was that amount exaggerated? What did you think about her saying that? Um, I think it's weird that she dropped um a, like an amount down, but I can yeah like I I can see that my my husband's in the liquor industry and that it's so easy to spend that much money on a on a new brand. Yeah, but it's I weird did. That she just it's weird that she just like gave us the amount like no one cares. Right. Um. So she, she did say, so she did post on her story, by the way, she wrote, I work really hard. I gifted my friends diamond necklaces and instead of appreciating the thought, they talk trash. Unbelievable. I'm a giver, but whatever, you, what have you given me besides BS? Oh, wow. She talking about? Do you think she's talking about Alexia? She's, she was talking about, um, Alexia and Kiki. She CC mm. them. Wow. And then. And then um, Larsa also posted a picture of Kiki wearing the necklace. And she's like, and maybe don't rock my necklace, giving credit to another jeweler. That would be nice at Kiki. <gasps> oh, wow. She's she's going in. Right. Oh, my gosh. That is so crazy that she said all that. But then Larsa had a jewelry line. So it's like, okay, like you got these for free. Did she have a jewelry line? Yeah. Oh, when I didn't know. Miami came back the first year and they went to the Hamptons. It was because her jewelry line. Yeah, I don't know. Also, my husband is sick and has a cold, and he keeps like making a million noises, and I'm just staring at him, giving oh, wow. him the death stare. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got a haircut, you guys, and I just keep looking at my hair. Oh yeah, she like cut her hair. I like That's chopped cute. it. Yeah, that was weird and random because <laughs> you never talked about it, so I was just confused. I know. Um, Slim Good Body said, "What do you think about Lisa? How long do the group need to feel sorry for her when she really doesn't care? What do you think, Chantal?" I think the group needs to feel sorry for her up until she literally gets her divorce settlement. Like, until she's officially divorced and, like, that's it. Then after that's like, I don't give a shit, Lisa. Yeah, you're you so your right. Coins, once we know you get your coins or you got an amount, no one gives a shit anymore, Lisa. Yeah, like, no we're not cares. talking about it anymore. Yeah. So I think, true. like, the shock of it, everything should be done by now. And it's like, it's like, you have a new boyfriend. Let's move all, let's all move on. Right. Exactly. So true. Uh, travel... 
Tohi, I probably said that wrong, said, have you believed Kyle was honestly separated from Mauricio? I do. I don't think Kyle would make this up, especially with her children, especially on next week's episode, the previews. We see Kyle get emotional with her daughters and her daughters are crying. Yeah. Who would put their children through that? Like, let's be real. And like, you know, like, I feel like this is, it's like, everyone says this, like, divorce is always hard at every age. And I feel like when you're older, like, you literally understand the magnitude of like what your parents are telling you. And like, I'm sure that was de- that's devastating for them to know that their parents are going through so- stuff. Right. Lindis Bernardo said, Lar- Lars's denial of her situation with boyfriend's family. What were your thoughts on that, Chantel? Um, like, are they saying that, like, she, like, she thinks that, like, um, Michael Jordan and the wife likes her? Yeah, like, on the, on the last episode, they talk about. Yeah, yeah, know, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think she's projecting a little bit. I think, like, it's like, she's just wanting us all to feel that way and know that way. And it's really not that true. Yeah, absolutely. Larsa, I mean, no one would probably be happy with the situation. And they knew Larsa when Larsa was with Scotty. So it's all very weird. And I think, like, just knowing that you're, like, first of all, like, he's, like, she's a public figure. But, like, knowing that maybe your son one day won't have be able to have kids, I think that's, like, a hard pill to swallow for anyone. But Larsa's saying, I'll give you kids. I have eggs. I know. (laughs) So, like, Lars is crazy. And, like, for Lars to want to start all over and stuff is so crazy. Yeah, that's wild. But, like, it's weird. Like, are the eggs, like, I don't know, whatever. What are you guys thinking about Miami? I wonder what everyone thinks. Like, are they, I think it's still just as great, but I think it's so crazy because when I'm watching how Nicole's, like, so checked out. Oh, yeah, she's so checked out. She really is. Like, you barely see her. I'll be talking back next season. No, I think she'll. Why, really? Yeah, because like she like didn't really have any that much to offer, and it's, it feels like she doesn't care to be there that much. I think she was really baby making, dude. I know. Yeah, but then what happens when know. you actually have the baby? Like, right? That's so true. Like she doesn't need the show. Like I think when like you don't need the show. I know. Like she has like the wealth, and then she has. I'm sure they have like this. You know, the nor- notoriety because like her guys like you know rich and like they oh like everyone knows her now you know i don't think she needs it she has her right. own thing she works now she has two kids like i don't know I, I i can see her not coming yeah i know i mean even kyle kyle doesn't need to come back either we talked about this like but kyle you generally have... loved the show like she like loved it she loved beverly hills like she yeah. loved saying i was born and raised in beverly hills yeah. but now she does not think like that and i think morgan kind of changed her with all that where she's like i want to live in the woods i'm just kidding what did she say um she, she said, said something she said, she said um ski what's a ski one on uh, colorado aspen. or something she aspen. yeah she the house there yeah, she was just, like, saying, like, she wants something quiet, and that's where, you know, Morgan's from and all that, so, I don't know. We'll see, I mean. I hope I meet my Morgan at 55. Oh, my gosh, I'm telling your husband. Like, no, I meant, like, that changes, like, just, like, your views in life, and, like, you just have that moment. I don't know. Sometimes, like, life is too blah. I know. Yeah, I guess. I don't, I don't know. That was scary that you just said that. <laughs> I feel like I, I need met, to like, ma- I just met like someone husband. to come in and like really just like wake you up if you were like in such a, like, I don't know, a rut or something. Yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully that's your husband who does that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> we do. Gosh. Um, but yeah, I think that's all that we got for Beverly Hills and Miami. Yeah. I think Miami, um, Miami is doing well. So yeah. I hope I feel like I hope more people watch it so that like we can talk more about it. But yeah, yeah I think okay. overall it's still really good. It just doesn't get the love that it should. Yeah, and some shows don't. It sucks. I can't wait to talk about the reunion for it because the looks, you know, it was horrendous. But yeah, it we'll was horrendous. It. Um, just so you know, everyone thought it was the best reunion looks ever. <gasps> I didn't get one bad comment about their looks. I thought they looked great. Oh my god, really? I feel yes, and, and just keep in mind, they, they all get a theme, so yeah, I, I actually agree. I thought they looked great. Oh my god, let me look again real quick. Because Except like, Julia. I, Julia never, I don't know what she ever does. I mean, Lars looked really scary, too. Yeah, no, she still looked great. It was part of the theme, though. Yeah, I know, but just because you're part of the theme doesn't mean, like, you... I think they all killed it. Like, if you go look, go on All About Terry H, we got, like, so many likes and comments on that. Um, the reunion looks at every single person said they are the best dressed like group. They look so good at this reunion. What well, um we'll talk more about it because I like to do the rewards yeah. thing, but like there's someone shocking that it look, looks amazing. Yeah. 
Well, that's all we got today. Thanks for listening, guys. Make yes. sure to write a nice little review about us and join us on Patreon if you can. We love you guys. Hope you have a great day. Bye, guys. Bye. Hey, everyone. It's Chris Frangiola, and I'm the host of your new favorite podcast, Cover to Cover. Each week on Cover to Cover, I scour the world's newspapers to bring you the craziest stories in fashion, music, pop culture, food, you name it, we give you the comedy angle on all of it. If this sounds up your alley, listen to Cover to Cover on the iHeart app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.